I mean, if it's, it seems like they're completely committed to this. They are. And if they don't win it. The, the Russian position is that our demographic structure is, is in such diseased and aged and terminal decline that the Russian state will be turning the lights off sometime between 2050 and 2070 anyway. Anyway. Yeah. The, uh, th they've had a series of big melon scoops out of their birth rate throughout the history, uh, World War I, World War II, the collectivizations under Stalin, Brezhnev's uh, mismanagement, Khrushchev's mismanagement, uh, the post-Cold War collapse, and a lot of these stack on top of each other. And the biggest one stacked on top of the post-Cold War collapse. So there are more Russians in their 50s than their 40s and their 30s and their 20s and teens. And then they lie about the data of the teenagers on down. Uh, which means that there, isn't, there aren't enough Russians ha that have been born in the last 30 years to carry the ethnicity forward much farther. And so they're thinking if they can forward position their military and plug those gaps now with their last generation of young people, then they can kind of die on their own terms. 50 years from now. Have but they really thought about this th in that term? Like yeah. This, this, one way or another, this is the end of Russia. The question is whether it dies in the long term on their terms or in the shorter term when they're completely unmoored. Because if they fail to secure those borders, then they've got a 2,000 mile open border with countries they consider to be hostile. And they have no way of moving troops around in a way that would allow them to defend it. They'd just be waiting for somebody to come over and knock them over. And you, you believe that they're aware of this, that they, they can't survive past 2050, 2070, right. whatever it is? I think that's what's been driving them because 2022 was the last year where they had a sufficient number of people in their 20s to even attempt this. So from my point of view, not only did the war always have to happen, it always had to happen by now. Jesus. Now, is this just because of the nature of a dictatorship that's run by someone like Putin, that it's just completely mismanaged because he's just dominated the power structure and made sure that everybody f falls in line with his ideology and his reign like what what caused all this to be so poorly managed well russia has always been poorly managed and authoritarian but under putin it's taken a much darker turn uh, because of the nature of the end of the cold war uh, if you remember back to 1982 there was a coup in the soviet union and Chernomyrdin and Andropov and Gorbachev were FSB, well, then KGB agents who basically overthrew the old system of Brezhnev and took over and try, because they were the only ones who really had a full understanding of what was going on. They controlled the information. Uh, they were not able to save the system, and so it broke. And Putin is the successor to that legacy because he was also in the KGB. And we're now in an environment that between the terminal demographic structure of the Soviet slash Russian system and Putin's personal paranoia. So he's gone through and purged what was left of the KGB FSB of anyone who has personal ambitions to succeed him. We're left with an entire political elite of only about 130 people. And Putin has removed anyone who has leadership ambitions. Oh, geez. Now they all see the world the same way. They all kind of agree with Putin on what's at stake here. Uh, but it does mean that when this generation is gone, this is it. This is all the leadership talent that the country has. So because of his sort of top-down approach, he's eliminated all the possibility of future leaders in yeah. some way. Even if Russia did have a replacement generation coming up, and it doesn't, he's taken steps to make sure that they can't challenge him. And so any sort of leadership talent has left or been killed. <laughs> 